Hi guys, welcome back. We are going to continue this series and we are going to discuss Hosea chapter 2. Of course, remember the reflection, the questions, those are all my perspective and the things that God put on my heart. But of course, I want everybody to hear his voice only as we go through this book of the minor prophet Hosea. So let's go. I've titled this, Whose Are We? And Whose Is That? which we have. Hello, all of you darlings out there. May our Father be with each of us right now. God is good always and in everything. May his word penetrate deeply into our minds, hearts, and spirit. May his wisdom become apparent as we do our best to apply his word into our daily lives. May Holy Spirit hold us steadfast so we may be feel in our relationship with God. He is our all. Let us praise him as we continue in the book of the minor prophet Hosea. Allow me to remind you that the first part is my perspective, and then together we shall read the Bible passages, focusing on these. His wisdom is found in his written word. We learned in chapter 1 that God asked Hosea to live out his life as an example of how Israel was unfaithful to him. Hosea, his wife, and their children's lives would tell about how Israel had forgotten whose chosen people they were and who had bestowed upon them all they had. When the Israelites became idolaters, this converted them into adulterers in their relationship with God. This choice damaged the covenant with their maker, but God, in his mercy, would show them grace again after allowing judgment to be declared upon them. Let's go further in chapter 2, shall we? Chapter 2 warns us about the disastrous effects of dishonoring our relationship with God, about refusing to acknowledge God's power and grace in our lives, and of idolatry. The people of Israel lived a lifestyle that did all of the above. God had committed to them and had granted them everything they had. Regardless, they took it all for granted and stopped being grateful. They became perverted with the lies of the enemy and no sooner than they felt successful, they began to self-promote and so the roots of vanity set in. Not sufficient with their vain nature, they worshipped and honored pagan gods. Baal was recognized as a very important Canaanite god, giving it credit as the provider of abundant orchards and vineyards. Their focus had turned to idolatry and the accumulation of riches and wealth. They had allowed decay and the prostitution of themselves in relation to their idols. They had turned from God. And in this chapter, we will also learn how God has a limit. And I've underlined that because we should remember that. Yes, God is graceful. Yes, God is ever loving. Yes, God wants the best for us. But also as a loving father, he must set a limit. He must set boundaries. Lest us we get completely lost. He will allow us to be punished by our own sin. God doesn't punish or disrespect us even when we do him. Our disobedience causes him pain. It really does grieve him for us to be disobedient in nature. However, the enemy delights in watching us inflict pain upon ourselves through his lies, our sin, and when we leave God's side. So what can we learn from chapter 2? God is merciful. And even though he will put us through judgment, he is also there to receive us once again if we repent. No matter how far we go from his side, no matter how we punish ourselves through sin, no matter who we believe or place above him, if, and I say if, The Bible also has this several times where it says, if. 
If we repent sincerely, God will embrace us again. He chose us as his and everything we have is because of his goodness. A life of peace and joy is one where we hear his voice say to us, as is written in Hosea 2 verse 23. And to those I have called not my people, I will say, now you are my people. And as the final words of verse 23 state, you, our, our God, we should pronounce them, these words, with fervent hearts. Let us never, never put aside or take for granted that we are chosen. He is our God and we are his people too. Mm, Amen. So allow me to share with each of you these takeaways that God has put on my heart. Number one, when we want a relationship to flourish, we act with honesty, loyalty, and recognition of who that person is in our lives. Sometimes those relationships will yield more than others and at times we can be less or more dependent on them. So if we as Christians recognize that we are completely dependent on our loving Father and that He alone provides for us abundantly and perpetually, shouldn't we focus completely on being loyal to Him with all our heart, mind, and spirit? Is our desire to focus to be his forever? So is that our desire? Are we focusing our lives and our decisions on being his forever? We'll see that in Hosea 2 verses 19 through 20. Number two, what are we putting in front of our relationship with God? Are we slowly and stealthily recognizing more and more as idols any of the following? Our children our grandchildren, friends, church ministry goals. So we want to meet humanly goals. We want to look like we're active and working for God. But are we putting those ministries before God? Our academic achievements, work, money. And we'll see what the Bible says about idols in 1 Corinthians ten fourteen. Number three, are we praying, reading his word, surrounding ourselves with other Bible-based Christians and assessing our choices so that in doing so, we leave no space for the enemy to enter with his lies, lest we forget that we too are his chosen and that everything we have is because of him. We'll see that in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9. So, It's always in my heart that God reveals other reflective questions to us each as we listen to his word. May he guide us, strengthen, and delight us as we recognize his power and generosity. Let us now meditate on the previous mentioned Bible verses and then Hosea 2. So Hosea 2, 19, 20 talks to us about this. And I will betroth you, Israel, to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice, in loving kindness and loyalty and in compassion. I will betroth you to me in stability and in faithfulness. Then you will know, recognize, and appreciate the Lord and respond with loving faithfulness. Amen. So here we see how God is telling Israel, yes, you've lied to me by breaking the covenant of understanding who I am in your life. Yes, you've worshipped other gods, but because I choose you and I betroth myself to you, and this is when they decided or when they decide to come back to God's presence, he will offer loving kindness, loyalty, compassion, stability, and faithfulness in that covenant that he's willing to undertake again after they had destroyed it. That is the same for us as well. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10, 14 talks about idols, and it says, Therefore, my beloved, run, keep far, far away, 
any sort of idolatry. And that includes loving anything more than God or participating in anything that leads to sin and enslaves the soul. Amen. So then 1 Peter 5, 8 through 9 tells us about the enemy's lies and what we need to do to resist them and to stay on the path with God. It says, be sober, well-balanced and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour but resist him. Be firm in your faith against his attack, rooted, established, and immovable. Knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters through the world. You do not suffer alone. Amen. It's so important to surround ourselves with Bible-based belief Christians so that we can be strong as, because there's strength in numbers. That's also in nature. We know that. Amen. So now let's go on to Hosea 2. Israel's unfaithfulness condemned. Hosea, say to your brothers, Ami, you are my people. And to your sisters, Ruamah, you have been pitied and have obtained mercy. Contend with your mother nation. Contend, for she is not my wife and I am not her husband. And have her remove her marks of prostitution from her face and her adultery from between her breasts. Or I will strip her naked and expose her as on the day she was born and make her like a wilderness and make her like a parched land and slay her with thirst. Also, I will have no mercy on her children because they are the children of prostitution. For their mother has played the prostitute. She who conceived them has acted shamefully, for she said, I will pursue my lovers who give me my food and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my refreshing drinks. Therefore, behold, I, the Lord God, will hedge up her way with thorns, and I will build a wall against her, shutting off her way so that she cannot find her paths. She will passionately pursue her lovers, but she will not overtake them. And she will seek them, but will not find them. Then she will say, let me go and return to my first husband, for I was better off for me then than now. For she, Israel, has not noticed nor understood nor realized that I was I, the Lord God, who gave her the grain and the new wine and the oil and lavished on her silver and gold, which they used for Baal and made into his image. Therefore, I will return and take back my grain at harvest time and my new wine in its season. I will also take away my wool and my flax, given to cover her nakedness. And now I will uncover her lewdness and shame in the sight of her lovers, and no one will rescue her from my hand. I will also put an end to all her rejoicing, her feasts, her new moons, her Sabbaths, and all her festivals. I will destroy her vines and her fig trees, of which she has said, These are my wages which my lovers have given me. And I will make them a forest, and the animals of the open country will devour them. And I will punish her for the feast days of the balls, when she used to offer sacrifices and burn incense to them and adorn herself with her earrings and nose rings and her jewelry and follow her lovers so that she forgot me, says the Lord. Restoration of Israel. Therefore, behold, I will allure Israel and bring her into the wilderness and I will speak tenderly to her to reconcile her to me. Then I will give her her vineyards from there and make the valley of Accor a door of hope and expectation, anticipating the time when I will restore my favor on her. And she will sing there and respond as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up from the land of Egypt. 
It shall come about in that day, says the Lord, that you will call me Ishi, my husband, and will no longer call me Bali, my ball. For I will remove the names of the balls from her mouth, so that they will no longer be mentioned or remembered by their names. And in that day, I will make a covenant for Israel with the animals of the open country and with the birds of the heavens and with the creeping things on the ground. And I will abolish the bow and the sword and banish war from the land and will make them lie down in safety. And I will betroth you, Israel, to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and in justice and loving kindness and loyalty and in compassion. I will betroth you to me in stability and in faithfulness. Then you will know, recognize, and appreciate the Lord and respond with loving faithfulness. It will come about in that day that I will respond, says the Lord. I will respond to the heavens which ask for rain to pour on the earth, and they will respond to the earth which begs for the rain. And the earth shall respond to the grain and the new wine and the oil, which beg it to bring them forth. And they will respond to just real, my Israel, who will now be restored. I will sow her for myself in the land. I will also have mercy on her who had not obtained mercy. And I will say to those who were not my people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God. Amen. Amen to that. So these are the love nuggets that came to my heart and I give them from my heart to yours. May we stay close to our Father at all times as we live our daily lives. May our actions reflect the sacred covenant with our Savior. May we publicly recognize how He has chosen us and how we receive Him. Let us speak to others of how we are forever bound by His grace and mercy and that we honor and love Him as best as we can. May our hearts only worship Him. May our minds always be clear and that He is our only provider and that we are completely dependent on Him. May we use all of our might to take His word to others so that they too may become His for all of eternity. Mm. I'd invite you, I'd like to invite you to receive the most beautiful gift that is yours for the taking, eternal life. If you are ready to do so, please say this prayer aloud. God, here I am, recognizing that I need you to guide me towards a new life. I recognize that I have sinned, and I repent truly and surrender to your will. From now on, I will do my best in allowing you to make changes within me. I proudly recognize publicly that Jesus Christ died for me on the cross. And because of his sacrifice, your love, my repentance, and belief, today and forever, I am your child and can now live eternally in your kingdom. I ask that you give all this to me in the name of your son, Christ Jesus. Amen. So, my darlings, I send each of you, as always, all my love, 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 love. I may not know all the needs I pray for from each of us, but God does. And Holy Spirit will intercede for us all. Remember to share these videos and together we will complete the Great Commission as we take his word to the nations. Bye-bye. Love you guys. God is great. Always.